Having lived in Cornwall, people assume that I know the whole region well, which obviously isn't the case. Nobody makes the most of where they live. People from elsewhere in England come down on holiday to places like Bude and assume that I must be familiar with that place because it's in Cornwall, when the reality is, I don't know it, and I actually try to avoid the touristy places. Plus, since I live here, Bude sits in the region of unknown. Too far away to justify visiting for a day, but too close for us to bother going on holiday too. So having grown up here, I'd say I know this region rather well, and have a particular fondness for these places, but the rest of Cornwall's a bit of a mystery to me. Covid has helped though, having forced us to discover holiday destinations closer to home, and recently I've spent a bit more time exploring the north of Devon. This is the next county along from Cornwall. I consider it to be up country, but the rest of England considers it down. I now live in South Devon, but the road network is so bad here that it's still a trek to reach the north coast, which is where we visited on holiday recently. We chose the worst time to go since Storm Eunice struck just a day before, but since we had already paid for the accommodation, we went up and managed to get a decent day of walking out of it. In case anybody's still interested in Game of Thrones, we saw them filming the new series here, around the corner from Heartland Quay. Not that we recognised any of them since they're all new characters, and because Matt Smith was wearing a RIDICULOUS wig. Ireland was used for places like Dragonstone in the original series, but the cliffs here are similar, all twisted and warped with lots of epic looking bits jutting out everywhere so it's no surprise that they were filming here for what I assume will be Dragonstone. Moving much further up the coastline, this is Mort Point, and it has a bit sticking out that looks like the skeleton of a stegosaur, and you can see Lundy Island in the distance. I've used footage from here a few times in my videos. The whole area is nice, and I've done round walks to Lee, which is a quaint place with a few houses and stuff. Moving over to Ilfracombe, this is the biggest town in the region. You think of Devon and Cornwall as being full of old people, but Ilfracombe surprised me by being full of younger people, terrorising the neighbourhood by visiting the parks, socialising with one another and generally just having a good time. The high street here comprises of discount stores, which I expected to hate but actually found really fun and got little squishy things from them. But to make the most of anywhere around here, you have to climb for it, and I've seen some spectacular sunsets from the cliffs around this spot. It's got some lovely coastline which really needs smoothing out with a displacement tool, because surely nowhere should be this bumpy. And there's a famous statue of a woman with half her skin missing. It was actually the tallest statue in England for a while, but with a sword like that it's kind of cheating. Similarly to how I don't consider Wiltshire Grand Centre to be the tallest building in LA, just because it's got this long pointy bit. Anyway, moving around the coast a little bit more we would reached the Hangman Cliffs, which are the highest cliffs in England. You ever wondered what happens when a mountain meets the sea? That's sort of what these are, they're part of Exmoor, so it's the edge of quite high up moorland. There's Little Hangman which has an iconic pyramid shape, while Greater Hangman is further along and has a much smoother appearance. They both look tall from a distance, but reaching the top of Little Hangman gives me greater appreciation for just how much higher Greater Hangman is. It's one third the height of England's tallest mountain, Scarfell Pike. My first Covid video's thumbnail is actually from around the back of it, about halfway up. Sadly both times I've been up there have been around this time of year, and it's been very wet and muddy, and blowing a gale at the top. Oh no, someone's broken their bone. Which obviously wasn't helped by Storm Eunice. And the last place, further east again, is the Valley of the Rocks, which is home to probably the most scenic cricket pitch in England. It's impressive from this side, but even more so from the other, where there's a nicely tarmacked path running around the side. You could get a wheelchair along it, but probably shouldn't. Again, Storm Eunice made it very windy when we did it this time. There are even a few rocks on the path which come off the cliffs. Again, we cut this short this time because we didn't know how long we had before it started raining again. But you can extend this walk all the way around the edge of the cliff and into Linton, making it a nice short round walk and you can even see across to Wales on a good day, which I've rarely had there. Linton is the top bit of town, and Lynmouth is the bottom bit, and they're connected by a long funicular. A lot of places on the north coast have a dark feeling to them, and Lynmouth more than most. It's deep down in a steep valley, and it's obvious it doesn't get much sunlight. There's even a conspiracy theory called Project Cumulus, where people claim that a flood here in 1952 was caused by a cloud seeding experiment. And that's about as far as we've gone. So just in case you wondered what exactly is here, Along this bit of coastline in England? Now you know.